Hey, welcome to the Electronics channel. In this video, I am going to do an example where I calculate the operating point of this circuit. I'm gonna use two methods to do this calculation. The first method is the more precise method, and then the second method is an approximation. And then I'll also show you when and under what conditions you can use that approximation. So the first step in the more precise method is to figure out what the Thevenin equivalent is for this input or this circuit applied to the base. Redrawing that circuit as its Thevenin equivalent gives me a source, which I'm going to call VTH, applied through a resistor, which I'm going to call RTH, TH for Thevenin, applied to the base of the transistor and the rest of the circuit at the collector and the emitter is the same. The Thevenin equivalent voltage simply comes from the 16 volts getting split between the 47 kilo ohm and the 7.2 kilo ohm resistor. And that voltage is going to be 2.13 volts. The RTH is the equivalent resistance seen from this point, and that's going to be equal to the 47k in parallel with the 7.2k resistor. Next, I want to figure out what the base current is. And the base current is going to be determined from this voltage loop right here. In that voltage, I have my 2.13 volt source. I have a drop across RTH, and that's going to be IB times RTH. Then I have a drop across this 0.7 volt base emitter junction. And then I have a drop across the emitter resistor. And that is going to add up to zero volts. I'm back to the ground reference there. Now I'm going to make an observation that I can substitute for IE the equation beta plus one times IB. And then for this equation, I have only one unknown, and that is IB. So that can get B, that's going to be equal to beta plus one times IB. And if I substitute that in and solve for the base current, I get 1.43 volts divided by 6.24 kilo ohms plus beta plus one times that resistance of 2200. And IB works out to 6.25 microamps. Now, since I know IC is beta times IB, I can easily figure out my collector current, works out to 0.625 milliamps. I can also easily figure out my emitter current from this equation here, and that works out to 0.632 milliamps. Now, in order to get the operating point, I need one more piece of information. I need the collector emitter voltage, or if I'm looking over here, collector emitter voltage. And for the collector emitter voltage, I can look at this voltage loop right here. So 16 volts minus the drop across the 10K resistor minus the collector emitter voltage minus the drop across the 2.2 kilo ohm resistor brings me to zero. So written out 16 volts minus the drop across the collector resistor minus VCE minus the drop across the emitter resistor brings me to zero. And I have only one unknown here, and that's VCE. And that works out to 8.36 volts. So my operating point, or my Q point, is the combination of IC and VCE. That's IC of 0.625 milliamps. And a VCE of 8.36 volts. Now how good of an operating point is this if I want to be biased in the middle of the load line? Well, I can look at the two extremes of the load line. There's the VCE off, which is the voltage between across the collector and emitter when there's no current in this path, and that's going to be equal to my VCC, or 16 volts, and my IC sat, the saturation current. And that's going to be equal to the collector current when the collector emitter voltage is about zero volts. That'll be that full 16 volts across 12.2 kilo ohms, which works out to 1.31 milliamps. My collector emitter voltage at cutoff is 16 volts. 
the operating point is at 8.36 volts, approximately half of 16 volts. So I am actually going to be biased approximately in the middle of the load line, which means this particular transistor circuit is a good one as far as, as bias point goes. Now I want to do analysis on the same circuit, but this time using the approximation method. And in the approximation method, we make the assumption that the base current is approximately zero, or so low that we can assume it's zero. In order to make this approximation, we're assuming that the resistance seen looking into the base is much bigger than the resistance seen looking down this path. And much bigger means this is about 10 times more, at least 10 times more than the resistance seen looking in here. So to write that out, that means the 7.2 kilo ohm resistor has to be 10 times bigger than what's looking into here. So it has to be not equal, but less than or equal to one tenth of beta plus one, so it's going to be 101 times that 2.2 kilo ohm resistor. And since that works out to 22.22 kilo ohms, this statement is true, so I can make the approximation. So if I'm making the approximation, there's no current here, then I the voltage at the base is going to simply be the voltage divider between those two resistors. And that works out to 2.13 volts. If I know the voltage at the base, I know the voltage at the emitter is going to be 0.7 volts less than that. So my emitter voltage is 1.43 volts. If I know the voltage at the emitter, I can calculate the current going through the emitter. That will be the 1.43 volts divided by the 2200 ohm emitter resistor. And that works out to 0.647 milliamps. If I've made this approximation that the base current is, is so low I can ignore it, that means the emitter current and the collector current are going to be equal to each other. Now the final thing that I need for my operating point is the collector emitter voltage, the voltage between those two points. Again, I can look at this voltage loop here. So it's going to be the 16 volts minus the drop across the 10K resistor minus the collector emitter voltage minus the drop across the 2.2K resistor. And that brings us down to zero. Solving for VCE now gives me a voltage of 8.09 volts. So my Q point is that combination of the IC and VCE. An IC of 0.647 milliamps and a VCE of 8. 0.09 volts. So in the previous example where I did a more precise method, I had an IC of 0.625 milliamps and a VCE of 8.36 volts. So using this approximate method, I get fairly close answers. And considering that beta is something that's variable anyway, I can, I can assume that this is a reasonable calculation for getting the operating point. Thanks for listening and I'll see you in the next one.